This is Nintendo Video Game Trivia. Twenty-two long years ago, a college-bound J.J. Jinks moved out of his parents' homes. But before I left, I entrusted my entire Nintendo game collection to my good friend Soup Master, and he held on to these ever since. During my last road trip, he decided, hey, I still have these. You want them back? <laughs> sure, absolutely, thanks. So here's what I decided to do. I haven't looked through them yet. Uh, I'm going to go through them one by one, and as a challenge to myself... I'm going to try to sing or hum one of the songs from each game. And I'm going to play the actual soundtrack side by side to see how close I get. <laughs> this particular cartridge has three screws in it, which means, uh, I think that means it's a later design. They used to have five. Cost reduction. Uh, it's been a long time since I've just looked at a physical Nintendo cartridge. <laughs> feels really great handling one of these. So many memories. But anyway, uh, I don't know what this means. It says Rev A, and it's copywritten 1985. What game do we have? Abadox! Oh, look! <laughs> They've even got the... Uh, I remember uh, I put stickers with my name on it. Uh, on, on my games. Uh still there that's that's funny abadox the deadly inner war by milton bradley this game was absolutely fantastic gory as hell really difficult um gosh now i have to think of a song from it okay um hmm. well i remember the sound from the title screen it was like a <laughs> something like that Abadox. And here's the next one. A little bit of a different labeling on the back. Still says Rev A, 1985, copyright. And then there's like a... Maybe a serial number or something down here? I never really noticed it. And there's a an 05 stamped into the uh, sticker. Hmm. Oh, yes. Shadowgate. Developed by ICOM Simulations. This was a game where I had first played it on the Macintosh, the, the adventure, um, the Mac Venture series. It was a uh, Shadowgate, The Uninvited, and, um, Deja Vu, and then there was a sequel to Deja Vu. There were, there were subsequent, like, Shadowgate spin-off games. My favorite of the three was The Uninvited, especially in the old black and white Mac, uh, you know, Macintosh version. The atmosphere was fantastic. Uh, this game, was known for having some really memorable music, so I should have no problem with this one. And so on. Alright, next game. Kind of like the first one. Uh, double zero stamped into this sticker. Let's um, flip it and... Oh, hell yeah! One of my favorite games of all time, not just for the Nintendo, but in general. Metroid! Da, 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 da. Uh, 
Uh, it's kind of an abbreviated version of the opening score. I have a lot of these. <laughs> no copyright date on this one. Interesting. Three screws again. Wah! Ah! Exivius by Bandai. This game was interesting. It started as an arcade game. It was ported to lots of different devices. I don't know what's going on with the color here. It looks like it was puked on or something. Muse there was only one song, one, one track in this game, and it just looped the whole time. So I should remember it, right? <laughs> Look at that cover art. That's one of the things I loved about some of these old Nintendo games. The cover art was fantastic. Do 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 kind of studied the development because I had this theory that this was one of those games where um, it was originally a completely different game and then somebody came in at the last minute and decided to make it a Adams Family themed uh, game. I was wrong. It was intended to, to be Fester's Quest from the get-go. Had an interesting conversation with the guy. Uh, I'll put a link to his website in the comments uh, about this game, if it still exists. This was quite a long time ago. Uh, oh, ho, oh. and the music. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Boom, boom. Bum, 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 bum. Ba 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 bum, ba 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 bum, wham 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 wham. Growl roop. Ha! Wow, this one has seen some shit, possibly literal. <laughs> Robocop by Data East. Part man, part machine, all game. What a great phrase. <laughs> I played this game a lot. Um, I actually, I also had a game genie, and I couldn't get past, like, level three without the game just getting impossibly hard. So I used the game genie uh, to get the Cobra gun from right from the start, and that really made the game a lot easier. Um, <clears throat> but the music... Uh, this is harder than I thought it would be. I, I can see the game scrolling by in my mind. Um, I can hear the sounds. <sighs> you know, it's funny, is I know that some of the music in the game is themed after the music from the movie, and I'm blanking on that right now. Um, shit. Alright, I'm gonna have to lose a point on that one. Uh, on to the next one! Aha! The Simpsons! Bart versus the Space Mutants. There were a few Simpsons games on the Nintendo. There was Bart versus the World, and then there was another one... I, I, I can't seem to remember. Uh, this one was very difficult. I did actually beat this. Um, I beat Bart versus the World as well. Uh, that one, you know, the museum level, especially really hard. Uh, Bart vs. the World might actually come up in this stack. Uh, no idea what happened to this cartridge. It just, I don't know, sun bleached or something? Anyway, well, obviously there's the Simpson theme that features in this game. Um, but I don't want to be, be that easy on myself. A non-Simpson themed... Okay. There's a lot going on in this image. I'm just kind of... Looking it over, you got Lisa Simpson down there on the bottom left squirting a fire hydrant onto Principal Skinner with Maggie cheering them on. Apu is uh, got a Made in Japan logo slapped across his forehead. Oh, uh, you got some of the space mutants coming out of the sewer. And there's the cat snowball too, I think. Uh, Brand X spray paint. You got the nuclear power plant in the background and construction worker. Or maybe that's uh, one of the nuclear power plant employees getting attacked by some purple aliens. There's a lot going on here. I like it. Homer riding on a UFO. Mo creeping in the bushes. <laughs> what are you doing in there, Mo? <laughs> S 
spying on Marge and Santa's little helper. A lot of the songs in here were different, but also just Simpson themed. I'm gonna pass on that one then. I don't want. I don't want to be like I said. I don't want to be too easy, easy on myself and just belt out the Simpsons theme. Oh, I have a lot to go. <laughs> I, have, I got. I had like 25 of these. Uh, okay, next. Ah, oh, yes, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers by Capcom. This game was fast-paced, pretty fun, uh, really difficult in two-player mode, though. Um, it was very easy to kill your teammate. <laughs> and this is another game where the, the theme to the Chippendale Rescue Rangers cartoon features quite a lot in this game. And I'm not going to be able to remember any other music from it, because... Oof. Another loss for me. See, when, when I am the subject of some kind of trivia, it... I'm not so much the expert that I might seem when I'm the MC. Ooh, this one's a little bit loose. Um, oh! Okay, Snake, Rattle, and Roll. I actually think that this game might have belonged to Soup Master. For a couple reasons, my name sticker is not on this one. And at some point, we had, like, you know, swapped, uh, borrowed, uh, lent games to each other, and the ownership got a little bit hazy, but this game had a great soundtrack to it. And it was also a lot of fun to play. And I can't think of any of it. Ah, oh, that's another one that's going to bug me when I hear it. Gee, another loss for Jinx. Uh, next. Double Dragon 3. I think that I bought this one from a yard sale or a flea market at some point. I loved Double Dragon and Double Dragon 2. This game um, was just so much more difficult to me that I just did not get very far. I did not play this game as much. I'm glad I only paid $3 for it in 90s money. I'm not going to come up with the music for this one. I'm just going to take that loss and move on. Okay. Jeopardy! Based on the hit TV game show. See the exclamation point? <laughs> anyway, uh, my mother actually bought this game to play with her sister because they loved Jeopardy! And, um, obviously the, the main soundtrack is going to be the theme song to Jeopardy, but I remember some of the other kind of quirky music things from this game. So here we go. Um, when you were asked a question, it would go, boop. And when you got a question wrong, or actually, I should say, when you got an answer wrong. When you were given an answer, and when you get an answer wrong, uh, it would go... Ah. And then, while you they was waiting for you to give the input, because you had to, like, kind of type everything in with an on-screen keyboard, it would just have a simple... I get a point, I think. <laughs> Next! Ah, was never really sure how to pronounce this one as a child. The Legend of Kaj is the way I always pronounced it by Taito. Uh, don't know the true pronunciation, but um, this game was interesting. It, this is one of those games that played on a loop. The gameplay was very fast-paced. It was very easy to die. And um, it, the game, when it looped, it was like a different season each time. A lot of outdoors spaces, very Japanese. And uh, I had a lot of fun playing it, but it got very repetitive. But I played it quite a bit. Just got to think of the, some of the music. I remember there was like this little spark thing that you could find in the forest. And when you when you touched it, it would like kill everything on the screen. It would make this very strange pulsating sound. It was like a... Uh, 
uh, the music otherwise was, um, oh, okay, I got it, I got it, it was, Next game, Robo Warrior. Hmm. My name is it's not on this one, but this was mine by Jaleco. Now, this game is interesting because it was insanely popular in Japan, and they actually worked on a sequel to it for the Game Boy. Uh, but then, for strange reasons, they they couldn't make it uh, under the name Robo Warrior. I don't know. Don't know. Not sure why. So they actually kind of re-licensed it, retitled it into a sequel for Blaster Master, which they ended up calling Blaster Master Jr. So Blaster Master Jr. on the Game Boy was originally supposed to be a sequel to Robo Warrior. Uh, this game took a really long time to play. It was kind of a Bomberman-esque exploration game with kind of an interesting storyline to it but you would only know that from the uh instruction manual basically there was a colony of earthlings and then all the earthlings like stopped responding disappeared so earth sent to rescue everyone the robo warrior who found yep aliens took over and you gotta go from there <laughs> now the music Next. Oh, ho, ho, Faxanadu. Okay, this game, I, <laughs> I've got an interesting story about. Subtitle says, Daggers and Wing Boots, Mantras and Monsters Await You. This was a, um, an early kind of adventure RPG game. Uh, I guess I bought this secondhand as well. And some years ago, I actually found a copy of it still in the box, complete with manual, that I thought would make a really great Christmas gift to my friend Soupmaster, and I picked it up for him. I bought it in New York City. When I was in the third grade, we had a creative writing exercise where we had to write a short story. And uh, I wrote the story to the storyline to Faxanadu. <laughs> and then in that classroom was a little third grader uh, Soupmaster. And afterwards, he was like, You just wrote the story of Faxanadu, right? <laughs> I was like, Yes, I did. <laughs> And I remember what made it so funny was I, I used this specific phrase to describe a town that was destroyed by monsters. I said it was a horrorized mess. <laughs> Pretty challenging game. A lot of exploration, a lot of items to find. It, it, it's actually a, a pretty good game objectively speaking there were a lot of different places that had different music in this game including there was like churches and towns but one of my favorites was when you went to a shop there were key shops butcher shops and it was kind of this like um well i'll just sing it <laughs> Okay, next. This one has a barcode on the back. Uh, that could mean this was an ex-rental. Hmm. Let's find out. Super Spike V-Ball. This one definitely was owned by Soupmaster, and from the looks of it, it might have been 
an X rental. I don't remember playing this too much. Um, I would have to really dig back in my memory. I remember there was a like a dodgeball game that had characters in it that looked like the characters from River City Ransom. I don't think that's this game, though. I'm going to have to skip this one. I don't recall the music. Next. Whoa. Platoon for $4.99. I'm kind of tempted to peel off this sticker to see what the uh, sticker underneath it says. <laughs> Uh, this was another Soup Master owned game. Uh, I did play it, but it, I didn't understand how it worked. This was one of those games where there's a, there's a game mechanic that I was completely oblivious to when I tried playing the game, and I just never got anywhere. So I very quickly gave up. And I don't even remember the game mechanic now. I remember watching a video about someone playing this game. Um, and I'm like, oh, so that's how that works. Nor do I remember any of the music. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get it. Luckily, I haven't clipped. Oh, shit. Luckily, I have not clipped my nails in a while. That's what I was going to say. Very vaguely make out like a double zero there. So it was probably just an older price. Uh, likely a higher one. Platoon. Next, we have a slightly yellowed cartridge. Uh, and it is. Ah, there she blows. The Simpsons Bart V. The World. And um, this game was a lot of fun just because of the variety of places. Um, you actually went to a lot of things shown here. Hollywood, the North Pole, Egypt, and China. Um, yeah, and they show a lot of the different villains and stuff here. Pretty interesting take on the Simpsons and uh, the video game. Basically, uh, Mr. Burns has relatives all over the world, and they all kind of look like him, but a little different, including an abominable snowman. <laughs> really difficult toward the end, a lot of platforming challenges. But again, this is one of those games, it, uh, pretty much all the music is the Simpsons theme, but just like slowed down a little bit here and there, maybe a different bass line. Maybe we'll call it a wash. I took away a point for the previous one. Maybe I'll add a point for this one. Do 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 do. Uh, there we go. Game. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure by Don 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 L J N. Hmm. Five dollars. This was another game, uh, I believe, Soup Master owned. I did not play it too much. It is well known to be one of the most terrible Nintendo games ever made. <laughs> uh, I gotta have to skip on this one because I think this was from Soup Master's collection primarily. Next game. Ah, yes. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, this this game was really interesting, actually. Made by Ultra. You might notice on the cover that all the Ninja Turtles have the same colored bandanas. And that's because in the original comic books, that was the case. And this game came out right around that time. And um, Ninja Turtles was one of those things where it, it was dark and violent in the comic books. And then, you know, the cartoons and the merchandising, things kind of changed a little bit. Um, this was another game that was like kind of an adventure game, very different from the arcade game, which was also ported to the NES. Um, there was an exploration involved, you had to collect different tools and items. It, it was fun, it was um, Metroidvania-esque, as they say, and it had a killer opening song. <coughs>
All right, coming down to the final few. What do we got on this one? 3D World Runner. Another really unique game that you could actually play in 3D. Um, there was a mode, I think you hit the select button, and it went into this uh, red and blue wire mesh version of the game, and you would put on one of those like red and blue 3D glasses, and it would come to your brain in three dimensions. Never got to try it as a kid. Uh, I think the game did come with 3D glasses. I just don't have any memory of actually doing it that way, so m maybe it just didn't work very well. But the game was fine without the uh, wire mesh thing, and it was still sort of 3D in that you were like running forward in a three-dimensional environment. Um, very, very fast and difficult game that I have beaten without the Game Genie. So on and so forth. <clears throat> Next game. Oh, this one's got some battle damage. <laughs> what do we got? Operation Wolf. Take no prisoners. Uh, this was another game that was ported from an arcade game. Um, used the light gun, one of the few. It was fun. I cannot remember any of the music. <laughs> Very popular game, I just can't remember the music, so I'm going to have to take a point away from my score. Next game. Oh, there it is. Turtles 2, the arcade game. The port. Very different from the first one, like I said. Very fun. Uh, one of the most popular Nintendo games out there at all. <laughs> this game also had a very large variety of music, but there was one track that kind of repeated throughout the game, and that was the boss music. That I remember the most. I think it was something like this. It was like... A few more. Marble Madness, another arcade game port. Really interesting story to the sequel of this game that I don't think was ever made for the NES. Um, yeah, check it out on YouTube if you ever want to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole. Marble Madness 2. Uh, but this game, incredibly difficult. Great music. I could never get past like the fourth level. Never beat the game. This is one of those games where like once you work out some of the quirks, it becomes really easy to beat. I just never got there. This is this is this is a thing. Okay, this is called Taboo: The Sixth Sense. Your personalized lucky numbers revealed. Um, I okay. This is basically a tarot card reading on the Nintendo. It's not really a game. Uh, my mom bought this, which is funny because she was always a little bit kooky religious, you know, like. It's not the kind of thing that a Bible thumper would want to mess with, you know what I mean? And she did not want me touching the cartridge. She's like, no, this is for adults. No children can play this. And I'm like, it's a fucking tarot card game thing, whatever. Uh, I eventually got my hands on it and played it. And um, it's interesting. Um, 
I used to ask it goofy questions like, oh, does this girl like me? And, and, and then you'd like go through all the tarot cards and like, I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> This is the last one in the stack. How many have we got? 10, 20, 25. Wow. Way more than I remember. Oh my goodness. Castlevania 2. Simon's Quest. This game was both loved and hated by many. I loved it. Uh, it was an adventure game, a questing game. Not very easy. Extremely like known for being counterintuitive, usually because of the bad translations. Um... It's, I, I never actually beat it, because <laughs> uh, some of the... You, you just get lost. But that was part of the charm. And then, like, I eventually did come back and beat it later, I think as a young adult with an emulator, and I'm like, oh, okay, it was kind of anticlimactic. I'm kind of glad I never beat it as a kid and just kept trying, because it made it more fun. You went to towns, there were churches, mansions, the wilderness... Lots of great music. There's actually, if you go on YouTube, people like will get on an electric guitar and play music from this game, and it sounds great even to this day. I've always really liked the town music during the day, that is. I don't know, there's just something about it that's kind of chill. Uh, it really sets the mood as like a medieval town, and it went like this. Ba 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 Let's see how I did. <laughs> I was wrong. Waterworld was not on the NES. So the next time we have a NES trivia, I will dock points from myself. <laughs> so those are the 25 games that have defined the childhood of J.J. Jinx and his friends. I know there were more. I definitely owned The Legend of Zelda uh, 1 and 2. And I don't know where they ended up. Uh, they're probably still around in one of my friend's closets. Uh, I'm trying to remember other games. I know I had Double Dragon 1 and 2. Those are not here, but somewhere perhaps. Dragon Warrior, I had that. I had Final Fantasy. Don't know where that ended up. Anyway, I could go on and on. I'm just going to end it here. This has been JJ Jinx. <laughs>